Keep your mouth closed and let's open this pajama. No, you don't. <laughs> Darling, she just wants to look at your chest. Bashful at his age. <laughs> there, now he's ready. Well, you should get under a sun lamp, pale as a flounder's bottom. <laughs> oh, poor darling, he works too hard. He doesn't take care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Hazel? What is it? Shh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What? Button up now. Here, let's see your temperature. Perfectly normal, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, what does it say? Does he have a fever? He's going to be fine. Just fine. Can I see you outside for a minute? Of course. Wait a minute, just a minute. Don't you put one foot out of that bed. <laughs> what is it? How is he? Pulse is a little rapid. Temperature is 100.2, like I said downstairs. His throat's raw. He's got a little congestion in his left lung. If you ask me, I'd say he's got himself one beautiful cold. Oh, poor George. What should we do for him? Well, knowing Mr. B will probably be doing a lot of running up and downstairs. But first, <laughs> got to get out the poop kettle and get some oil of eucalyptus in it. Oh, uh, Hazel, what can I do? Go in and hold his hand. Nothing a man likes better than to be baby. <laughs> Hi, darling. How are you feeling now? Exactly as I felt two seconds ago. <laughs> well, what did the witch doctor have to say? Oh, she says you're going to be fine. Just fine. Dorothy, what did she say? Well, she says you have a little temperature, and your throat's raw, and there's some congestion in your left lung. Hazel says you need the croup kettle. Oh, nonsense. No, it isn't, George. You have a bad cold, and you have to stay in bed. Dorothy, I can't stay in bed. Why well, don't you have a phone in the room? And get that blasted hot water bottle off my feet. George, would you rather have Hazel's bed socks? No, I would not. Oh, this is ridiculous. I am not sick. Now, if you don't believe me, call Dr. Summerfield over here. He'll tell you. Look, Dorothy, you can't let a, just an ordinary maid put me in bed as if she were a doctor. George, Hazel is not an ordinary maid. Oh, for Pete's sake. Dorothy, what if I'm sicker than Hazel thinks I am? What do you mean, George? <laughs> What if this congestion in my lungs means <coughs> pneumonia? Oh, George, I'll call Dr. Summerfield right away. One, one way to skin a cat. <laughs> Hello, is Dr. Summerfield in? Oh, dear. Uh, do you know where he can be reached? I see. Um, well, when he comes in, will you have him call the Baxter residence? He knows the number. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, good morning, Dr. Summerfield. Come on in. <laughs> Dr. Summerfield? <laughs> well, this is the most fantastic coincidence. Well, what is, Dorothy? You're being here. I just tried to phone you. George is sick. Well, Hazel phoned me about three quarters of an hour ago. <laughs> Oh, you did? Sure. You don't think I put Mr. Baxter to bed without calling a doctor. I got a lot of respect for doctors. Thank you, Hazel. If I could have gone to college, I think I would have studied to be a brain surgeon. It seems to me that's where all the work needs to be done. I think it's George. Good morning, Mr. Griffin. Well, you it's are... Nice to hear you. Well, no, it's well, only... He said he'd be here by now. Well, perhaps something unexpected Call his came house. Up. But if he said he'd be here, Call you his be house, sure. Miss Scott. Why don't you just sit Miss down? Miss Scott, call his house and find out what's keeping him. All right, Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Back to residence. Oh, hi, Scotty. That bow of yours proposed yet? 